So when I was 18 years old, about your age, or maybe a little bit older than some of you now, I was living what I would call a normal life. I was growing up in Phoenix, Arizona with my family and attending an all-girls Catholic private high school with some girls that became some of the best friends that I've ever had in my life. And as I was in high school, I was living this normal life. And that all changed one day with a simple idea that my brother and I had. And so my brother was attending the University of Southern California, and he came home one winter break after a fatal computer crash. And he said, I've lost everything on my computer. Now what do I do? Um, and so we were sitting in his room brainstorming, you know, you got to go back and download Skype. You've got to download all these things. Um, and he was going through everything that he lost. And among the things that he lost was an Excel spreadsheet with all his usernames and passwords for everything online. And that was gone. And you can imagine being a teenager with no usernames and passwords, so you can't get into Facebook, you can't get into YouTube, you can't get into anything that you love. Um, and we were sitting there talking about this, and we were like, this is a problem. People have so many things online that they get into, and where, why can't we just click one button and get into everything? And so my brother and I sat there, and we thought about it for a while, and we said, we need to create something that allows you to click one button and be logged into everything online. And this idea stuck with us for a while, um, but we were both in school, so nothing really happened. Um, we would come back and we would talk about the idea all throughout my senior year of high school and his sophomore year at the University of Southern California. Um, we had a friend at the University of Southern California who was finishing his master's degree, and we would talk to him about the idea too. Um, and so the three of us were talking about this for a while, and nothing actually happened. And then graduation day came around, and I was sitting in my graduation chair at my high school. <laughs> Mirror pics, I know we all have those. Um, but I was sitting in my graduation chair, and I was watching all these amazing girls go up in front of me and behind me get their diplomas. And I was thinking 10 years ahead in my life. And I was like, 10 years from now, where am I going to be? What are the things that I need to accomplish in these next 10 years? And as I was sitting there, a list was going through my mind. And I was like, all right, I got four things that I have to do. I have to graduate high school, which I was doing, graduate college, which I was like, no problem. I'm going to NYU in the fall. I'm all set on my path. Um, get a good paying job and get married. So I'm sitting in my college graduation chair, and I'm feeling pretty good. I'm like, these are four things, 10 years. I can check them off the list. I got this. Um, but then I started thinking that all these amazing people that I was graduating with, you know, there's got to be something more for us in life to do. There's got to be something else, another purpose why we're here. There's got to be something else that we can do to make the world a better place or to make the world a place that we want to really live in. And so I was thinking about the things that make us live in a world like this. And they're, they're ideas that people have or experiences that people have that radically change their life and the way that they go on pursuing what they love. And so I was sitting in my graduation chair thinking, all right, so what experiences am I going to make for myself then? Those four things on the list aren't enough. I don't want to look back in 10 years and say, these are the four things I've accomplished, and go talk to all my peers and say, have you done these four things too? So I was thinking about the things that I could do, and later that night I went home and I talked to my brother, and I was like, okay, we had this idea before, we've just got to go for it. We've got to just build this product because it's a need that people have, and why not just try before I go off to NYU in the fall, before you go back to USC, and before um, our other co-founder goes off and gets a, gets a job. Why don't we come together and just try and build this? And so we did. My brother and I packed up our bags the next day after my graduation, and we moved to California, to Los Angeles. And we said, all right, we're going to give it one summer. The three of us are going to come together, and we're going to just work on this project and build it. But the thing that you learn when you just pack up your bags and leave without your parents being too happy about it is that you don't get to live in the luxurious apartment buildings in downtown Los Angeles. Instead, you go where you can afford, and you live in the 250-square-foot apartment building. It's probably comparable to your parents' family room. Um, it has bars over the windows. It's in South Central Los Angeles, which, if you're not familiar with the area, is not where you want to live. Um, it had triple locks on the doors. Um, the kitchen pipes were all broken, so my brother and I were cooking spaghetti. We made the mistake of putting it in the sink, and it ended up all over the kitchen floor. 
Um, and the bathroom was not, it just wasn't good. I compared it to like a public porta potty. It was not the best bathroom ever, but that's what you get. It was an experience, right? And so we were living here and working on this project and all my friends were texting me and they were like, you must be living it up over in California because in Arizona, everyone thinks that California is just like endless beach land. So they're like, oh, you're like by the beach. It's going to be great. Awesome. And I'm sending them back photos and I'm like, here's a photo of my life in California. It's great. And it was funny because I kept on trying to put all different, all these different Instagram filters on my photos. And I was like, one of these has got to work and it's going to look like the social networks version of Mark Zuckerberg and Sean Parker in the early Facebook days. But no matter what Instagram filter I put over all my photos, I was like, this definitely doesn't look like that movie. Um, it was a lot of hard work. And, but with all that hard work, we started building our product, which is called My Social Cloud today. And during that summer, another opportunity came along another experience, I would say. And it was when I was watching my Twitter feed one morning and I saw a tweet from Sir Richard Branson that said, enjoy intimate cocktails in Miami and two parties with me, donate $2,000, and then it gave an email address. And so I emailed him and I was like, okay, here's the deal. I'm not old enough to legally drink alcohol in the United States, but can I please come meet you in Miami? And later that night, I got an email back from someone on his staff that said, all right, donate $2,000 and fly to Miami in 48 hours and you can meet him. And so I, I email back and I'm like, awesome, can my brother come too? And she's like, donate $2,000 more dollars and then yes. <laughs> um, and so my brother and I were sitting there and we were like, all right, we're broke college students, how are we gonna get to Miami and donate $4,000? It's not possible, we're living in the 250 foot apartment. And so we call up my dad and we're like, dad, please, 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 can we borrow $6,000 from you like tonight so that we can donate 4,000 of it and then fly to Miami. And my dad, being the businessman that he is, was like, all right, put together a proposal for me. Why do you need this money? And where's it all gonna go? And we're like, all right, we got this. So we put together a proposal and sent, sent an email to him with all the details. And early the next morning, he called me and said, here's the deal. I'll give you this money, but you have two months to pay me back the $6,000 if you decide to accept it. And at the time, I was just like, all right, give me the money, I'm going. So my brother and I took the money, donated it, flew to Miami, and were able to spend two nights with Richard Branson and a bunch of other awesome people. Um, and we got to talk to Richard Ban Branson one-on-one -on -one and eventually get his contact details, and we came back to California with his contact details and worked harder than ever. All right, so I skipped a slide. Here's the parties. We worked harder than ever on building our prototype. Um, so we built the most basic version of the website that we could in three weeks. I think I only went outside once and that was to get groceries during those three weeks. And then we sent an email to Richard Branson and we were like, here's a link to our site. Can you go check it out and let us know what you think? And he emailed us back and was like, I think it's great that it's a great idea. You kids are obviously really motivated since you flew all the way here to meet me, really determined. Let me introduce you to a business partner of mine, Jerry. And so he introduced us to Jerry Murdoch, who's a technology investor. And we got on the phone with him and started talking more about our product and where we were going um, with the roadmap and the vision and how we were gonna make money out of this thing. Um, and Jerry flew out to California. And then later that night, we went out to dinner with him and he was like, all right, here's the deal. R Sir Richard Branson and I are gonna invest dollar for dollar in your company. Um, and so we shook that night on getting just about a million dollars invested in our company, which started as a, as a project earlier that summer. Um, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so pretty, pretty exciting being my age, I was 18 at the time. Um, and for all of you who might not know who Richard Branson is, um, Virgin Mobile, Virgin Records, Virgin Airlines, the Virgin guy, that's him. Um, <laughs> yeah, all right. Um, so then the next thing that happens when you get almost a million dollars in, is in, in investment is you go to your parents and you pay back those $6,000. We're like, here you go, 
Um, but we have another thing to say. Um, so this college thing that you've stressed our whole entire life, that's very important to get a job. Um, we went to our parents and we were like, we understand the value of an education, we really do. Um, and understand that college is a great path, but we've just started a business and that's not necessarily the path and the only path that you have to take to do something successful in life or to do something that's really yours. And so my parents were like, we understand, but you're, since I co-founded the company with my brother and another guy and we're the only two kids, my parents were like, one of you is getting a college degree. So me being the younger kid who had not experienced college yet at all, and my parents wanted me to go get that college experience, um, I went on to New York University in the fall, and I lived here. And um, I worked all the time between school and working on the business. I spent long hours in the library working. And so by the end of that year, I was like, I'm not getting the college experience. And as much as I love being in New York City and love being in school with kids my age, I love my business, right? And that's the opportunity that's set out for me. That's where I want to go. And so I was sitting in my dorm room contemplating all this, and I was thinking, well, all my friends will think I'm a failure if I drop out of college. I'll never, I'll, I won't graduate with all my kids that graduated in my high school class. And my mom's ever-present fear that she keeps telling me, she's like, you're never gonna go out and get married and never have kids because while all your friends are doing that, you're gonna be stuck in school when you're 40 years old. And so I'm thinking about all this, and I'm like, yeah, that could be a possibility. But, um, but I was like, it doesn't compare it to my business. So I went into my school, and I signed my leave of absence papers and said, all right, so I finished one year of NYU and I'm not coming back next year. And that's when I was saying, I'm gonna go out and create my own experiences in life. I'm not gonna live by these four things that everyone is, the, that's the traditional path for everyone. I'm gonna go out and make my own path. And so I did. <laughs> and it's been a great year so far. I'm so blessed to have an amazing team of people working on an awesome product with me. And I just want to leave you guys with a quote. It says, the world is not as it is. The world is as we make it. So I encourage all of you to go out there and shape your own world and make it into what you want to make it to be and live your own experiences. Thank you. <laughs>